All right, welcome. Um, so I got the creepy vibe a little bit, except for the music. I was in my feels a little bit, listening to a little Rust. We just haven't mess met yet. Um, great song. I enjoy Rust. Um, I know that's kind of, you know, not that hip right now with you guys, but it's good. I like it. it was, it's fun to listen to. Um, great song. Just in my feels a little bit today. Um, so today we're going to be talking welcome to people's history. Um, forgot that part. So welcome to people's history. I'm super excited to be here as usual. Um, I'm really happy to get to talk to you guys again. Um, today we're going to be talking about cultural transformations, um, mostly Western Christendom today. So we're going to be talking um, mostly Christianity and kind of the spread of Christianity um, during that time period. But you know, because it's Halloween, um, I do have a guest lecture for the final lecture of this three-part series. Um, remember, we are lecturing out of Ways of the World, um, the modern edition. It just came, it got released this year. Um, this is for an AP World History class, but we're going to have some fun, too. Um, and so my guest lecturer is Bane. Pulls your pathetic interesting and a little bit intimidating um, as I'm sitting next to him although I do find it a little odd that we have similar tattoos but you know what great minds think alike okay let's just get into it um, so the first and foremost uh, or, I hate that first and foremost I say that way too much but um, as we start when we talk about um, the diffusion of Christianity I feel like we really need to talk start talking about kind of um, the step back from the Roman Catholic Church. And that all really took place in about 1517 with the German priest Martin Luther and his 95 Theses. Um, the Protestant Reformation, I'm not gonna lie, is not, my, is not the most interesting history, um, aspect of history for me. But, you know, it is extremely crucial to the way that the world is shaped today. Um, before we get started though, I know I'm jumping in, um, I wanted to point out this dude right here, so um, it's kind of a funny story. So I was working at a metal shop and um, kind of created this out of a, uh, out of a former lampshade and I kind of created a little, uh, a little candle holder for it, you know, and I presented it to my, uh, my ex-wife, you know, all super proud of myself that I had welded and put, cut all these pieces together. And uh, she almost kind of chucked it aside and was like, what the heck is that piece of junk? People's your pathetic. Junk. And I was so proud of it. I still am. I love it. It's perfect for Halloween time. I got my skull all carved out with a little lamp, uh, candle in it. I'm really feeling that uh, Halloween vibe right now. So, um, But let's hop back in. So uh, 1517, Martin Luther, he... He writes this 95 Theses and he puts it on the door of a church. That's the story. Um, and so, but it's not the story itself that's the most important crucial aspect. It's that he is beginning to question the Roman Catholic Church. So the Roman Catholic Church was the end all be all when it came to Christianity um, for about a thousand years. Okay. Um, so for about a thousand years, the Roman Catholic Church had complete control over Christianity for the most part, with the exception of, of course, East, Eastern Orthodox Church. But when we're talking about the Western world and all of Europe, it was the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and so kind of the things that he was talking about was corruption within the church, kind of a loss of morals, things like that. Um, <clears throat> associated with that is what they ended up having this practice of penance. And so depending on your the severity of your um, of your sin, you could pay to have that sin absolved. So regardless of what it was, you could pay a certain amount to the priests and they would absolve you of that sin. You know, you do your Hail Marys and you would be fine, um, <clears throat> knowing full well what you were doing. And also another problem that he had with the Catholic Church was this idea that it was person to church to God. Um, and so with the Protestant Reformation, you saw this movement from person to church to God to person to God. Um, and for those of you guys that have read the Bible, um, Jesus says in the Bible that the only way to um, God is through him. And so that is actually in the New Testament. And um, Martin Luther was the one that started to bring up that you can question this. He also translated the Bible into German, which made it more accessible to the common man. 
Um, remember back then, the Bibles were written in Latin, which at the time had been a, was, was a dead language much as it is today, although it was practiced much more, right? But there, that was not a specific people's language. Um, that's what we mean by dead language, is that it, it's not, it doesn't belong to a specific group right then and there. So what do you think, Bane? Pulls you up pathetic. Okay. Um, getting back to it. So, uh, I'm not going to ask him again. The path, that, um, okay, so we talked about that. So all classes are equal under God's eye. This was a monstrous, huge revelation for the people of Europe. Before that, remember, we're talking about the feudal system, which looks much like a pyramid with the Pope on top, then the kings, then the nobility, um, and then the knights, and then the peasants underneath, or the serfs. And, <clears throat> and what the Martin Luther was saying, and kind of what the Protestant Reformation, the backbone behind it was that there is no pyramid, that it goes directly to God and to Jesus, and that is the way to heaven or to God. Um, and that was revolutionary idea, and it really flipped the Catholic Church on its head. And you saw more and more countries leave the Catholic Church as a result. First, and first because of probably tax reasons, right? Um, remember that these kings felt that they had to um, give to the Roman Catholic Church. And so you started to see rulers kind of move away from that for that reason, <clears throat> also to kind of remove some of the corruption that was within the church as well. So we'll talk a little bit about women. Um, so the Protestant Reformation takes place and unfortunately for women, they lost a few avenues. So if a woman in the Roman Catholic Church was not into getting married, didn't want to have to prove herself in the man's eye um, and believe that you know she could get to God through the church, she would join um, the sisterhood and become a nun um, go to a monastery, live a celibate life. And those are ideals, core ideals of the Roman Catholic Church is our priests should be celibate along with our nuns, um, kind of this symbol of purity. Um, the Protestants believed in something completely different. They um, did not believe in, in celibacy, um, rather that a man and woman should be joined regardless if it's a pastor or a priest, and that there needs to be that that human connection in order to reach God. That's kind of the idea behind it. Um, so the Protestants move away from that, from that celibacy, and that loses some of the women's rights to get away from being married. Um, so in a Protestant life, if you, you could not just become a nun. Yeah. Um, this guy wants to meet you guys. I'm going to pause real quick. This is my dude right here. This is, this is uh, Mello right here. Say hi, Mello. All right. Um, so, um, wives and mothers are also subject to male supervision even more under the Protestant rule. It's kind of one of those things where the patriarchy continues. Um, so when we talk about change and continuity, um, if a question on the AP exam has to do with patriarchy, you guys better get that down because it's throughout our history. <clears throat> so the movement spreads relatively quickly. Um, Protestant churches begin to pop up all over the place. Um, you also saw a lot of um, Protestant movement into New England area of the United States. Um, and the United States was basically founded on a Protestant ideal. Um, you see a lot of anti-Catholicism throughout the United States history. For example, we've only had one Catholic president, John F. Kennedy. Um, his brother may have been president. I mean, he was popular enough to, who knows what would have happened, um, but he was assassinated as well. And so we only have had one Catholic president. If you want to see kind of that skiff that cr was created within Christianity as a result of the 95 Theses, um, as an example in our society, we can think of Notre Dame football versus the uh, University of Southern California football. They still have a pretty heated rivalry. It's not as heated as it was before. But that is a symbol of Notre Dame being a Catholic church, USC being a Protestant church, and those two teams going at each other. And it's kind of that same idea throughout Europe at that time point. So some of the, um, a bunch of different sects of Christianity rose from the Protestant ideal. Things like um, Lutheran, Quaker, Anglican, Calvinist. Um, Anabaptist and up till recently um, non-denominational is still very very Protestant in ideals so if you belong to a non-denominational um, church they have a lot of Protestant ideals most likely your pastor is married um, and most likely your pastor will give you some type of message to where it is um, you and Jesus 
um, and the only path to get to heaven is through Jesus. And that the pastor's role is to help you live a more um, a, a more clean life. You know, you want to live in the footsteps of Jesus is the ideal behind the, um, you know, the Protestant religion. Um, okay, and so what takes place, I'm not going to get too far into the 30-year war, but that's really what takes place. And it happens from 1618 to 1648. And you have these um, skirmishes between Protestants and Catholics throughout Europe. Um, one of the most notable kind of losses was the Germans. The Germans during that time period lost about 15 to 30 percent of their people during these wars. Um, remember, Martin Luther was a German, um, a German priest. And so it was kind of like the starting place of all of this. Although England saw a huge rise in, um, in the Protestant faith, a lot of that can be stemmed from Henry VIII moving away from the Roman Catholic Church and into the Anglican Church. So then let's talk about the Roman Catholic Church as it is. So the Roman Catholic Church had a movement, rather than to become um, more accepting of these new ideals on the 95 Theses, um, they decided that they would reaffirm or have a counter-reformation. And so what they did is they reaffirmed their practices that you need to do your Hail Marys, that you need to have the religious dogma associated with the Catholic Church. And they also began to fix some of those problems that lied within the Catholic Church. Um, so also in your book um, on page 300 to 301, there is an absolutely fantastic map that lays out where exactly um, Christianity had gone at that point in time. So um, what happens is the Protestants really opened up new avenues for Christianity. And you kind of saw this spread as a result. Remember, um, through the economic, um, the economic idea of mercantilism and the need to gather goods, we saw a lot of religious, um, religious missions to convert those Native Americans. And Christianity grew leaps and bounds for, during the early modern period that we're talking about from 1450 to 1750. Um, so Christianity was both motivated and expanded are both motivated and expanded political and economic ideals, um, but they also benefit greatly from globalization. They, globalization allowed the Roman Cat or Christianity to spread to the magnitude that it was to become the dominant religion in the in the world um, in the mid modern period. When you talk about 1750 to about 1900. Um, even moving on beyond that, um, now we start to see Islam rise a lot more with, with Indonesia and some of these other countries like, you know, India and Pakistan and the Middle East. So we've seen a rise of Islam, but for a long time, the Christian faith was, was the largest faith in the world. Um, so that's about it for this first section. I know it was kind of quick and easy. Um, what I would do if I were you, if you want to learn more about the Protestant Reformation and Oliver Cromwell, I know I didn't touch on it very much. We will as we move along. Um, but John Green has a great video on the, on the Protestant Reformation, on the Reformation. I would check that out. Um, also you can, um, you can go to the History Channel. They have some great stuff on the Reformation. Again, it's not my favorite time period, um, but it is interesting in how it shapes the world moving forward. Um, some of the questions to ask yourself about this lesson would be things like, um, how did the 95 Theses affect the culture of the world? That's a great question. You know? So, I'm really, really glad you made it. Um, thank you for watching the video. Um, this guy is quite intimidating, but I'm glad that he made it. Um, thank you very much for watching. We're going to do one more video like this. Bain, are you all right with sitting here? Okay. Um, so he'll stay, which I think is okay. Um, but um, I'm done here. So um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Remember, you're going to do amazing things. Um, and I am so proud of you guys for taking a grab at your education. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun. Fools, you're pathetic.